Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got a debut on the channel today from the constructor Geese Mania uh, and their Sudoku, for it is a Sudoku, although it's a bit larger than a normal Sudoku, called Dark Magic. And this one is a deconstruction puzzle, so I'm guessing it's 11 by 11. Actually, I'm just going to check that. Yeah, 11 by 11. And, um, and it's got Magic Squares A Go Go in it. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, and the testers had already passed this puzzle and suggested that it would be a great puzzle for the channel. And then we had an email last night from Dorlier, the maths professor, saying that it would be a very nice puzzle to appear as well. So this is why I'm going to attempt it today. Um, and I'll read you the rules in a moment or two's time. I've got a few things to mention, though, today. Let, let's let's go through them. The first is crossword content. There is a, um, a masterclass video which comes out every Friday. Um, so that happened this morning. Very good puzzle from the Times as usual. Worth having a look at. And then over on Patreon we've got Mark's solve of the same puzzle in which Mark uh, Mark goes fully race in fully racing mode. Always an interesting thing to see. Um, so check that out if you enjoy cryptic crossword stuff. Um, yeah and we've, we're, we're going to be streaming again next Tuesday a game called Last Call BBS. And actually, we've had a few recommendations for this very recently. But when I typed uh, BBS into, into our Gmail account, I got a whole litany of emails that have... So this has been recommended a lot to us over the last few months. And particularly, we've got to have a go at something in this game called Dungeons and Diagrams. Don't know what it is, but apparently it's a bit like Nickelly Games. I like Nickley games, so that's what we're going to be doing next Tuesday night, 10 p.m. UK time. Love to have your company. Um, I will continue to be going through Islands of Insight as well, but I'll be doing that um, as and when. Um, and I will try and record myself and put that on Patreon uh, when I get the chance. Um, and then I've got some birthdays to do today as well. So let us start with Elizabeth who has turned 64 today over there in Santiago, Chile. Is it Chile or Chile? I, Chile, I quite like. Um, and this is your daughter, Victoria. Elizabeth wrote to us and said you'd appreciate the shout out. And I hope you even understand that I'm saying happy birthday to you because Victoria's email suggested you might not speak English, but you still enjoy watching the channel, which is fabulous to hear. And I know you're having chocolate cake today with cream frosting and um, Chilean hot dogs and Victoria was kind enough to send me a picture of said it does look very good I hope you can see that let me move it over a bit there there can you see that that does look good that is a ma is that mayonnaise on the top there that's a lot of mayonnaise I mean I'm a man who likes my ketchup but uh, actually I would have that much ketchup on a hot dog yeah and it's that avocado look at that. it looks delicious anyway Elizabeth, many happy returns. Um, next, James. James, you actually share a name with with one of my good friends, um, but I don't think I don't think you are my good friend, are you? Um, you're my, you're my parasocial friend. But James, your father Phil wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out, and I know you're having chocolate cake today as well. So, James, many happy returns. Um, and next, Racky, I think it is, has turned the big four zero today. And I know this because your friend Craig wrote to us with the most fantastic story. Apparently the two of you found the channel in 2020. You've since both left your jobs and started your own game company. And this week, in fact today, uh, you are at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. And you attribute this in some small measure to cracking the crypto. I don't know how that can be true, but Racky, that, that's fantastic. I hope you have a brilliant birthday today and very best of luck uh, with the game company. You'll have to you'll have to let us know once you've launched your first game and we can take a look at it. Um, but yeah, many happy returns and I like the story. And with that, we'll turn our attention to some dark magic. Um, let us see what Geese Mania has in store for us. These are the rules. So we have to draw nine non-overlapping three by three boxes in the grid and fill them with the digits one to nine such that no digit repeats in a row, column or box. Uh, so it's sort of normal Sudoku except we've got to work out where the three by three boxes go. Uh, cells outside these nine boxes should be left empty. Uh, any three by three box that is not in the corner of the grid must also be a magic square 
i.e. each three cell row, column and main diagonal of that box must sum to the same total. So say we worked out that this was a three by three box in the puzzle. Because this isn't in the corner, this would have to operate as a magic square. Now, those of you who've watched the channel before, or maybe naturally arithmetic, will be able to instantly tell some things about a magic square. But how does a magic square work? Well, the way it works is that this row, this row, and this row all have to add to the same total, as do this column, this column, and this column, as do the two main diagonals, so that one and that one. How that will, how that will work, you'll have to work it out. Um, now there's some more rules. Black dots separate digits whose ratio is written on the dot. So these are unusual black dots. So these two squares are in a one to three ratio. These two squares are in a one to four ratio. Normally black dots are in a one to two ratio, but these are expressly are not that. Maverick. Maverick, how does, how? Maverick has been quiet today and hasn't taken off. I've, the video's been running how long? Six minutes. And Maverick's in the air about to buzz past my window. It's weird. Anyway, sorry. White dots separate consecutive digits. So we've got a couple of those. Um, a clue outside the grid gives the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. So these... Oh, hang on. Uh, let's go to colours. Oh, let's go to that. Um, those cells will sum to 22. But obviously... I say obviously... But I'm guessing only some of these are actually going to be in three by three boxes. Otherwise, we're going to have to keep these very, very low indeed. Um, and then what else? We've got digits along a thermometer increase from the bulb end. So let's look at this thermometer. So if this was a one in the corner, this would have to be greater than one. Let's say it's three. That could be seven. That could be eight, for example. One, three, seven, eight. That's how that might work. Uh, then we've got... Um, uh, what else have we got? Hang on, sorry. Let me just find it. We've got diagonal. Digits cannot repeat on the blue diagonal. Okay, so that's an interesting way of that, that rule's expressed. So it doesn't say that the digits 1 to 9 appear on the diagonal once each. It just says digits can't repeat on the diagonal. So we're not allowed to assume that this diagonal will contain 9 digits. Um, we're going to have to be careful with that. And then all clues inside the grid must fully fit inside the 3x3 three three boxes, except the blue line. So what that means is, well, that's giving us a bit of a heads up, isn't it? So immediately we could shade in a number of clues, I suppose. So I think all of those cells, ab initio, are inside three by three boxes. That's how I read that instruction. Um, I hope that's not wrong. Otherwise <laughs> this could be a very, very uh, a fool's errand. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Three stars out of five for difficulty, so apparently not monstrously hard. Um, and now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, I'm so tempted to start here actually, but in fact, Hmm. Okay, I probably have to start with some secrets, to be honest, because there are there are secrets relating to so-called deconstruction puzzles, and there are secrets relating to magic squares, and both are likely to be important. So, in fact, let's go back. Let's go to. Let's imagine that was that was a three by three square in the puzzle. It's not in the corner, so it is a magic square, and it must have magical properties. Now, what are the magical properties that this box must have? And there are many. There are many. Um, let's start with a Sudoku secret, a general Sudoku secret, because that might be important. Now, this is a secret I only share with my very favorite friends. And um, But if you're watching this video, of course, you're going to be in that, that part of the Venn diagram. Now, the secret is that this complete box of the Sudoku, because it, can, it, because it will contain the digits one to nine once each, it will contain, it's, it's got to sum to 45. That's what the digits 1 to 9 sum to. And therefore, we can do some arithmetic to work out how the magic square properties of this must work. So we know each row of this has to sum to the same number. 
Well, if the whole thing sums to 45 and there are three rows, that means each row is summing to 15. And that means each column is summing to 15. It means each diagonal is summing to 15. Um, that's an untidy diagonal. But we can go further. We can go further. We can use, use mathematics now to work out the value of this central cell. How do we do that? Well, the, the elegant way of doing this, I think it was Sam Kappelman Lines originally who, who, who showed me this. Um, the way to do this is to say, OK, well, I'm going to draw I'm going to draw in four parts of this magic square. I'm going to draw in col this column, the central column, this row, this diagonal and this diagonal. Now, each of those things individually sums to 15 because it's a magic square. But you can see if we if we look at the mapping of the lines we've just drawn, it overlaps every cell in the box except the central cell there, which is on four lines. But we know that if we just counted each cell once, every cell in this box sums to 45. So the difference between four lots of magic square lines, which add up to 60, and 45, is these extra appearances of this middle, this middle cell on on well because because this is on four lines we only need it to be on one line for it to complete the complete box of the sudoku don't we so those extra three appearances must account for the difference between 60 and 45 and 60 minus 45 is 15 15 divided by 3 is 5 so actually the next secret about magic squares is that if we found a magic square, we could instantly write a five into it. And that's why that's appealing to me straight away. But there's even more we can do because having written a five into it, we can now work out that there's some interesting parity properties to magic squares. Um, and the way perhaps to see that the most in the most straightforward way is to ask where the digit nine is going to go in this magic square. Now, to appreciate why nine can't go in a corner, you have to realize that corner cells in a magic square are part of three different ways of making up a total. So if we put a nine into this position, there have to be three different ways of making up the 15 total. Now let's think about how that could work. Nine, to get from nine to 15, we're gonna to have to add six on in two digits. And six in two digits could be a two, four pair. It could be a one, five pair. What, but what it can't be is a double three pair because this is Sudoku. We can't repeat a digit. So nine cannot go in a corner and be part of three different ways of making the total. So that tells us straight away, once I, once I, <laughs> once I do this, that nine has to be in one of those four squares. And nine indeed will it will then add up to add up with the five to 14. So it needs a one on the other side of it. So there's going to be a one on the other side of the five from the nine. But we can do exactly the same thing now um, with the digit. I don't know. Let's let's pick seven. Can we put seven in the corner? <laughs> Nobody puts seven in the corner. If we put seven in the corner again, there need to be three different ways now of making up the extra eight that we that we that we've we've got to add to the seven to get to 15. Um, but we know one of these digits um, if, if we put seven in the corner we, we well that's going to be a three isn't it that's that's one one way we can do it then we need to put uh, well, I mean, two and six, which could work, but but we need to put one and the other the other way of making an extra eight is a one seven pair. And that's going to repeat the seven. So if, that's the simplest way of seeing it, to be honest. So so having worked out seven can't go in the corner, seven must also go in these same cells that one and nine go into. And it must be opposite three. So what you actually end up with is this this sort of pattern. And interestingly, at least I think it's interesting, once you 
once we can position one of the digits it gets very it gets very forced because if for example we can position the one here we now know those squares have to add up to 14 so they're going to have to be 6 and 8 and then and then we only need one more digit and the whole thing will fall so if, if for example um, ah no I took the wrong digit out didn't I sorry these have, these have to be 3 and 7 so if that was 7 then you know this can't be 8 it would have to be 6 2 4 3 8 and that would be one of the orientations of the magic square so that's that is a, a sort of primer on how magic squares work in Sudoku. Now, I, I'm going to keep going on this, not on magic squares, but on deconstruction, because in any deconstruction puzzle that's 11 by 11, we can also state ab initio that all of those squares have to be part of three by three boxes. And the proof of this is rather elegant as well. So the proof of this is, could you, I've, I've highlighted these cells. Could you put a three by three box into this puzzle that didn't overlap with one of those green cells? I challenge you to do it. It's, and it, clearly when we look at it, it's impossible, isn't it? You can see however, however we put the three by three box in, it will overlap one of those. And interestingly, it will overlap exactly one of those. It's not possible to make a three by three box overlap two of these. But we have to put nine boxes in. And we've just said that any box we put in overlaps one of them. So in, in fact, it's sort of the pigeonhole principle. That, will, that means that each one of these has to be in exactly one of the three by three boxes that we're going to put in this puzzle. Um, so we could instantly, at the start of the puzzle, I don't know which color I want to choose. I might choose blue. Um, all of these are definitely in three by three boxes, but in this puzzle, we know more than that, don't we? We know those are in three by three boxes. These are in three by three boxes because these are clues. These, the, all, of, all of those are in three by three boxes. Um, something on this diagonal has to be in a box, but we don't know where. And something on... Uh, okay, so we, we've only identified one cell on the 22 diagonal so far. Okay, but presumably where we're meant to start is this 5. Because this 5 is part of a 3x3 three three box that's definitely not in the corner of the puzzle. So it is part of a magic square. So we know that that magic square, <laughs> because it must have a 5 in its centre, must be like that. So that is, that is, I think, the first box we're being donated in... Guise Mania's puzzle. So we can instantly put that in. Therefore, we can instantly um, put in the odd digits touching the five and the even digits not touching the five. And we've got a consecutive pair here. So, well, this can't be nine because that would be eight and nine plus eight is 17. And remember what we're trying to make is this add up to 15 wherever it occurs. Uh, yeah, so the same is true here. We can't put 8 here because it will go with 7 and that will be 15 and this can't be a 0. So we can get rid of 9 here, so we can get rid of 1 here. We can get rid of 8 here, so we can get rid of 2 here. Mm. Okay, okay, I'm now going to use... But because we worked out this cell had to be part of a 3x3 three three box, now that cell does as well. There's, there's no way we can we can have this in a three by three box and this not in that three by th that same three by three box because whether we take those or those or you know you can clearly see this is always going to be in the same is true on that side of the grid the same is true up there oh it's not true down there though oh right the top left is clearly in a box so we so there's another look that that is also being given to us look as an opening three by three box that we can draw in i love doing these puzzles because you get they get so colorful so quickly now this is in a three by three box so that must join to this square now this must extend upwards mustn't it because 
it can't be bounded on its top side it's going to bump into this 3x3 box so this is this is a new 3x3 box but we don't know or at least I don't know whether it goes there or goes there to complete we do know we can draw that line in now and we ah oh I see yeah okay and then this one is not in the corner of the puzzle so we know that this is a three by three, uh, is a magic square. Okay, so one of these two is a five. <laughs> one of these two is a five. And we, know, and we know that this is odd digits, don't we? So these are from the one, three, five, seven, nine set. Now we don't know. We don't know where the, the five is, I don't think. If the five was there, this would be in the 3x3 three three box, and these would both be odd. But if this is a 5, these would be odd, and these would be odd. Hmm. Um, uh, yes, and apologies if there's more bird noise than usual today. I have got my window open because I'm firmly of the view that spring has finally sprung. <laughs> And oh, well, this one. This is clearly part of of a of a three by three box that's not in the corner. So whatever three by three box touches this square is a magic square, but it's also got th thermometer type properties. But the problem is that this could do that, couldn't it? So it's not it's not necessarily the case that all of this thermometer is in is within the same three by three box. Although that's a five, so that can't be that can't be. Nothing in this column can be the centre of the box that's taking this. So that is not the 3x3 three three box that includes this. Right, so it's either this one or it's that one. Um, well, that's interesting, I think. Four. Yeah, yes, that is interesting. That's very interesting. I think that might have to be even as a string. And if it has to be even, it can't be in a magic square. Ah, ah, so is, is the point, are we saying that that has to be part of a three by three box that hits the corner? Because this can't be part of a magic square because these three squares can't add up to 15. Ah, that's probably what we're saying, right. Uh, sorry, the way I was doing that in my head was I was looking at the four ratio here and I was saying, well, okay, what's the lowest digit that can be on in the four ratio? Well, it's a one or a two, isn't it? We can't put three in here because that would have to go with a 12 and 12 is not a Sudoku digit. <laughs> so it's either a one and a four or it's a two and an eight. But if we look at this top digit now, this digit here, that has to be in a ratio of one to three with this digit. So if I put four here, again, I mean, four is not divisible by three, so we'd have to multiply four by three and we're getting to 12, that's not a Sudoku digit. And if this is eight, again, eight is not divisible by three, so we'd have to go to 24, that's not going to work. So this is the low digit, which means this is the high digit. And now, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that this, this string is even. If this is 1, this is 3. If this is 2, this is 6. So if this is, an, um, if this is an odd number, that's also an odd number. This is always even. And if this is even, the whole thing is even. So this is even, so it's not part of a, a, um, a magic square. So it, the corner, so this is a, this is a, new, a new thing we've discovered. That is a 3x3 three three box. Um, right, and now that is 
part of this one's. Um, oh, right. Yeah, now we can use the five in the middle. I like this so far. I really do. Um, because this can't be a square. Because it would be magical. It's not in a corner. And the five would go in that position where it would clash. So that's... An, we've now discovered a new an, uh, a new thingy, which we'll make... Oh, no. Orange is a bad choice. We'll make it red. Um, like that. And this is a magic square. So we can write five in the middle. We can write... Um, ones, threes, sevens, and nines in here. Now we've got to be careful with this one because this is thermometerable. Yeah, look, what's this low digit? It can't be three because there's two digits between three and five on the thermometer. So we go three, well, we couldn't go four, but if we could, we'd go four and then we'd be broken. So that's a one. And if it's a one by magic square properties, that's a nine. So these two squares are now three and seven. Uh, and this has got to be in the correct thermometer position. So we now, so now we're going to be able to get this done um, because we know that these two squares have to be six and eight to make this line of the magic square add up to foot fifteen. And we can't put eight underneath seven, so we've got to go six, eight, two, four, boom, and the four worked from a thermometer perspective. Now that three is looking up at the odd digits there so this is one nine so these two squares are th well they are three seven and this one ah no that's not resolved apparently that's weird okay so two four and six do all work with the three seven possibility um eight sees that square so that's a four so that's a one so that's a three Oh, 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 right, look. Okay, so, we are, so I wasn't going to assume this, but I don't need to anymore. I've got nine digits on this diagonal, which is not allowed to contain a repeated digit. So certainly we can't, the, these two squares are out of bounds. They can't have three by three boxes in, or we will repeat a digit on the diagonal. And now this one is going to have to extend upwards. So that's a new a new coloured box we've just established. I like the green going next to the orange. For some reason that that appeals to my chromatic sensitivities. Right, these two can't be part of a 3x3 three three box. Those can't be part of a 3x3 three three box. Um, okay, where is 1 on the diagonal? It's not here, because there's a 1 in the box. So it is on one of those squares, and we can't put one part way up a thermometer, or there's a, or you'd have to put zero on the, in the bulb or something like that. So this is one. Oh no! I thought I was going to get. I thought I was going to be able to pull exactly the same trick with nine, but I can't actually. Nine's in one of those two squares. It can't go on the th thermometer. Nine can only go in the tip of a thermometer. Ah. Oh, but this is a magic square. Sorry. This is a magic square and there's a three seven looking up here. So this is a one nine pair. So this is a three seven pair. So this digit is even and it can't be very tiny, can it? It certainly can't be two if it's four. No, right. This is, uh, this is six or eight, which, which is good. Yeah, right. I, I like this. Okay, so this, this square here is six or eight. It can't be four, because if this was four, this thermometer would go one, two, three, four. And that three and that three would be on the same diagonal, so that doesn't work. So this is six or eight. Now, therefore, could this be nine? No, because even if this is six, we've already got to 15 before this digit comes in, and we know this is a magic square, so everything is adding to 15. So this is one, this is nine, uh, this now is a 6-8 pair, and that 8 is very handy, 6-8, now that's 8 can't go with 7, so 3-7, and we've got to go 4 and 2, and this magic square is done, which very strangely doesn't actually do anything to the middle box. Uh, hmm. These are both even. Uh, okay, I'm a bit stuck now. Uh, 
Oh, maybe the six diagonal? I've got two on that now. So how could this be part of a 3x3 um, a three three box? If this is part of a 3x3 three three box, that 3x3 three three box looks like that. And then this 6 diagonal has three cells on it there, which must contain different digits. And even if these were 1, 2 and 3, once by the time we added the 2 there, we'd be at, at 2 higher total. So that's definitely not in. I mean, there's going to be a variety of other diagonal you know, diagonal boxes that can't exist here. But I don't really know how to represent them. Um, uh, this, uh, this, ma this is part of a magic square because it's not in a corner. And I don't know much about that, but I can tell you that the five in this one's box is not in this column because five because five is always next to odd digits it's next to a one nine pair or between a one nine pair or a three seven pair and one and three here prevent there from being a five in one of those so that must mean that this can't be can't be part of a three by three box can it because that would make this in, in the column with the five. So that square is, is a black square, which means that square is a black square, which means this square is a blue square, which means the five is now, it's not there. Because of this five. So the five is either here or here. <laughs> it's in one of those two squares, which is strange. Um, okay. So this square, which is not a 3 or a 7, that is a 1 or a 9 now. And that means, okay, so that does tell me the 9. Because I don't know whether this is a 1 or a 9, or this is a 1 or a 9. But one of them is, because there's a 5 between a 1, 9 pair in this column. And that's stopping that being a 9. So I get 9 in the corner. Um, now. Oh, can I use that again? Oh, good. That's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. Okay, so I spotted the point for the six diagonal up here. But actually, it's more important here. Because if that is a five and that is a shape, uh, let's draw it like that. Look at the six diagonal. All three of these blue green cells, sorry, are on the diagonal. We know that can't be true. So actually... It's this shape, I think, that we need to be uh, focusing on. So this, uh, should we use green or should we use, uh, maybe I'll make, I might make it grey, actually. Oh no, that grey is a bit close to the other grey. Uh, what about, oh, I'll make it light green then. Okay, so this is a shape and we know it's a magic square. So that's a five. We know this is a one or a nine. So we know that this is a three or a three and a seven. We have three here, so we know that's three, that's seven. Um, okay, that's good. Now seven, we always know, sits between two and six, don't we? So this is two and six. I'm sure, if we can, if we if we know how that works, we know this is four and eight. I see. Oh, wow. OK, so now look at the six diagonal again, because we've still got this digit contributing to it. Well, if that's eight now, we've broken the world. So that's got to be four. That's got to be eight. Now that must go with one and six and two and nine. So this magic square is full. But more importantly than that, the six diagonal is full. So all of those squares are not able to contribute to it because we've already got two and four on it. So all of these are not in a three by three. This is in a three by three by our earlier logic. So that's a three by three. I've not used blue yet. So I'm now going to use blue and avail myself of that. So that's all fixed. This, oh, and that's that's in a corner. So this is not uh, a magic square. So, but we do know what those digits are. Look, they're five, eight, and nine we're going to get chocolate teapotted on that that can't be nine that can't be five that can't be eight um 
We can place five by Sudoku in this box. Seven is in one of those squares. But seven, okay, so seven has to appear on the diagonal. And remember, these are even. So seven's now got to come out. Seven goes there, right next to the eight, which is probably the worst place it can go. And now we've got all, look, we've got all the odd digits on the diagonal. So we know these two squares are both even. And that can't be eight by thermometer logic. So that's two, four, or six. This one can't be four by Sudoku. It doesn't actually say, it doesn't seem to resolve itself, does it? Okay, well, what about that one? I might be able to do more Sudoku up here, but you know me, I'll shy away from that. I'm just wondering, this is definitely a magic square again. Now, where's its center? It's not in this row and it's not in this row because there's a five here. So, so this one, yeah, so th this one must have its center in this row. Well, how's that working? It must be there. That's the only place it can possibly go. So I will have to use grey now because I'm running out of colours. I should, I should. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I am going to run out of colours, aren't I? Because once I've used black, I've effectively used up one of my colours. Okay, um, but that's definitely a 3x3 three three box now. And let's do the edge as well. So now all of those are darkened because this, this is the last 3x3 three three box in the puzzle. It can't get to these squares. But I'm not sure we can do much better than that. Remember, this is a magic square, so we can fill the 5 into it. We know that this is a 3, 7, because 1, 9 is here. So this is the 1, 9. These are the even digits. Now, can we do anything? Yes, we can. Look, there's a 2 and a 4 looking at this, which means these two have become a 2, 4 pair. 6 and 8 here must go between a 1, so that's 1, that's 9. We just need one more digit to orientate everything. Um, seven, we can do it with that. So that's seven, that's three. Three must sit between four and eight. So that's six and that's two. And weirdly, this is still not resolving itself. Um, okay. And we don't know, do we? How am I going to know? How am I ever going to know what the, where this one goes? Right. Okay. That digit is even. Because it sees, it sees so many odd numbers here. The only odd number it could be is 9. If it was 9, this would be 8, which is impossible. So that is even. And is 2 or 6. So this is odd. And is either 1, it's not 3, or 7. It's 1 or 5. Uh, that's that's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. What a beautiful white dot. Don't often say that in Sudoku, but I really like this. So, so the point here is that this white dot cannot be part of a magic square because it's either one on top of two. And remember, magic squares add to 15. So uh, we'd have to have a 12 in the other position. That won't work. Or it's five on top of six, but we know five sits between odd digits in magic squares. Six is an even digit. So, it's not, so, so whatever this is, it cannot be part of a magic square. And therefore, where does it live in the puzzle? It must live in the corner, um, which actually is going to allow us to place the box I was getting slightly nervous about. So we get this position, ah, and now there's a five looking at this. So this is one, this is two, that's not two anymore. This column needs five, six, and nine. So that's a naked single five. That's a nine, that's a six. That's an eight now, that's a five, and that's a nine. How many nines have I got? Nearly, oh, well, I can get, I can get that one. 
That's so weird. I've placed eight nines in the puzzle, but I can't get the ninth. So the ninth must be resolved by by something else in this box. It's, it, deconstruction puzzles are so surprising because normally, obviously, in Sudoku, if you can place eight of the digit, you can place the ninth, but apparently not today. Um, six, seven, eight into these squares. That's a naked single eight. So that's six or seven. That's six or seven. This column, three, four, five. Yep, that's a four. That's a three. That's a five. Ah, that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Um, okay, so this isn't four. And these are four, six, seven, apparently. Okay, well, that's good because that's looking at that. So that's become a two. So this isn't two. Oh. Ah, but these have to add up to ten because they're on the diagonal of a magic square. So that's that's now not eight. So this is four, six. This is eight. That's not seven. So this is a six naked single. That's a four. That's a seven. That's a six. That's a seven. That's a two. Okay, that's fine, isn't it? That's working. Uh, now these squares up here are three and eight, which we can fill in. I think I think we're done, aren't we? Well, except I still don't understand how this middle box works. <laughs> um, those are not four and six, so they're two and eight. What's going on? How is this going to get rid Oh, I know. I've, I've just suddenly realised how. It's this diagonal, isn't it? I was thinking, I don't understand what, what could possibly affect it. But then I, there's a 22 diagonal. So we are going to get there in the end. Uh, three, four and six into those squares. So that's a three. That's a six. That's a four. And these are one, two and seven. So we can put seven in the corner. One and two. Now, what have we got on this diagonal? Um, Let's highlight the whole thing. It has got quite a few digits in it. 12, we've got 14 in it so far. So we need eight more. So these have to add up to eight. So they don't have nine in them. It's one seven, isn't it? So it's one seven, three here, which makes that four, nine here, this two, that's six, and that's eight. I really, really like that. I think, I think that's all the digits. Let's see, yes. Um, you solve the puzzle. It's correct. 26 people in 12 days. That is a very fine debut. Geese Mania. Lovely, lovely idea. Really nicely executed. Not many, not many clues in the grid, but those clues that there were work so nicely with the constraints. You know, the thinking through what, once you understood the sort of basic nature of the magic squares and what you could do sort of pinpoint the digits ah it reminds me it reminds me of the Ard van der Vatering magic square puzzle still I think nine million views that's that's now accumulated geese mania imagine if this got nine million views it certainly should in my opinion let me know in the comments how you got on I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic